So it is time to take a look at all of the rank 15 vehicles and it's time to compare them. After all, in the next big update, we should receive a new tier, tier 9, and we should also receive rank 16 vehicles, at least the first platoon. So, uh, the main question, well, what is the best rank 15 platoon? Well, we have three of them, the AMX, the OF, and the MAGA. And I'll start with the AMX, since this is the first rank 15 platoon that we have received. Now, the AMX vehicles overall are very nice. Uh, some would say that they could potentially be the best, although every one of these vehicles and platoons are unique and uh, different, and I'll come and I'll explain what I'm talking about here. Now, the MX-30 B2 uh, does have a very good gun, 105mm is the caliber, 65km per hour is the top speed, the reverse is also 65km per hour. It has very nice ammo, APFSDS, uh, which is probably the, the strongest APFSDS in the tier. However, this vehicle doesn't have a stabilizer, so... Yeah, that's basically the only drawback on the MX-30 B2. It also has decent, has decent anti-heat protection and does have very good protection against ATGMs. Now, the MX-32-105 doesn't have the explosive reactive armor, but it has a stabilized gun and overall it is generally about the same, uh, has the same speed as the MX-30 B2, but it does seem that it's a little bit less agile, but it is a very good vehicle, although I haven't, I haven't been that lucky with it, but uh, it uh, has a stabilized gun, has the same ammo, so it's a very, very powerful vehicle, and does play very, very nicely when it comes to the overall performance. And we do have the Mars 15, which is a light tank, as I like to call it, the mini baguette. This vehicle is very fun, it's very fast, has obviously no armor, has APFSDS and has heat, so 90mm uh, APFSDS doesn't do a lot of damage, but it can penetrate a lot. And honestly, this is just a very fun little vehicle to drive around. It also has a very good reload. And there is the MX-30 DCA. Now this SPAA is very very good, uh, some would say that it's probably the best SPAA in the tier, it can penetrate even main battle tanks, can punch through the armors of most of them since, I mean, I mean most of the main battle tanks have basically no armor. So this, this thing is actually very interesting and it's very fast, it's surprisingly has decent protection but the turret is basically the, the weakest spot and you can easily destroy the MX-30 DCA with a high explosive shell. The OF platoon, the pizza tanks as, uh, as players like to call them. Now, they are also very fun, very interesting. Uh, the OF-40 MK-2A is technically a modified Leopard, but this uh, this vehicle has a, uh, a different, I guess, uh, personality. It has the same caliber, 105mm, top speed 65 counter per hour, reverse 25 counter per hour, it has sent the same reload. Uh, the main thing on this vehicle is, well, I, I would say the, the armor. Uh, the the gun is stabilized. It has a very interesting armor. The turret and the gun mantle can bounce shells quite easily. The Leopard 1A5 is very interesting. Uh, should have the DM33 APFSDS, but unfortunately at the moment it doesn't. But it's a Leopard and it honestly does get the job done. It's a very interesting uh, very fun to, to drive vehicle and very similar to the OF but the thing that this tank needs is the DM33 APFSDS and you have the M113A1 Tau which isn't exactly a Tau carrier it doesn't have the the Tau 2B missiles that the CM25 has it's, it's an okay ATGM death box it does have good penetration, good damage but it's just about that. It's it's nice. Doesn't really uh, stand out in any way, shape, or form from the previous AT GM carriers that we had. And the CDM twenty five has quad twenty five motor auto cannons. Guess it does get a job. Does get a good job. Does get the job done against aircraft. So uh, it's decent. Uh, haven't really tested out the 
SPAA is much with the platoons, but it should get the job. And then we have the Magach vehicles and the Magach platoon. Now, the the Magach 6R and the Magach 6B are about the same. Uh, there's literally very very little difference between the vehicles. The Magach 6B does have a little slightly better armor, slightly better protection, but the explosive reactive armor in some cases doesn't seem to work that well. I mean, it does offer protection, but it's very easy to uh, avoid hitting the reactive armor, so the, the explosive armor. So it's not, you know, uh, it's not one of the cases where you don't really rely on the explosive armor on this vehicle. For example, the explosive armor on the MX thirty B two is much better. It does get the job done much better. All of the three vehicles here are stabilized, all of them have APFSDS and all of them have about the same gun. Now the shot Kal Gimel, that's an interesting one, uh, that's I would say the most unique vehicle of this platoon. It's based on the Centurion hull, uh, definitely a upgraded Centurion, and I would say this this thing can bounce shells, definitely the tankiest when it comes to armor. Even though th the game doesn't really show you that, it's definitely the tankiest. The explosive armor on this thing does get the job done. It does get the job done more effectively than the, the Magach vehicles, but all of them in uh, on the st on the stats on paper are generally the same. And we have the Hobbit, which does look very interesting. Uh, it's a anti-air vehicle based on the chassis on the CM25 chassis. Doesn't have a a TGM box and four or something, but. It's one thing to just look at the paper on the vehicles, let's see how they work in combat. And we will start with the MX-30 B2. Now, when I took this vehicle for the first time, honestly, it, uh, I immediately started to like it. It has a very fast rotating turret. Uh, the, the armor on this thing is non-existent, so just to be clear, okay, the armor on this thing is non-existent. Uh, but the main gun and the gun depression is really good, uh, it's very accurate. And the APFSDS, as I mentioned earlier, the APFSDS on this thing is insane. Now, it's true that the, the ammo is generally the same, I mean, it's the same type of ammo, all of them, all of them have like APFSDS, but the shell itself is different. Some APFSDS is better than other APFSDS. In the end, as long as you have APFSDS, you should be good, of course. But the APFSDS on this vehicle and on this platoon in general, but on this vehicle in particular, I would say the APFSDS ammo on the AMX 30B2 is particularly nasty. It has that kick to it when it hits, it just wrecks. Penetrates everything, obviously. Uh, does do a lot more damage than the APFSDS shells on the other rank 15 vehicles, that's for sure. I've done intensive testing, and that's my conclusion. The APFSDS on the rank is just superior to the APFSDS on the other rank 15 vehicles. At least that's what it, what it feels like. I mean, maybe I just like the tank even more, but I've, I've done so many tests, and that's basically my conclusion here. Now, the main drawback of this vehicle, and probably the main, the main thing that will probably discourage from uh, making this platoon your first rank 15 platoon, is the lack of a stabilized gun. Now, in this tier, literally every main battle tank has a stabilized gun, so you will be at a very great disadvantage compared to other vehicles, compared to other main battle tanks since the very main gun is not wobbling all over the place when you move. The main gun on this thing will be wobbling because it doesn't have a stabilizer. It's not it's not stabbed, right? It's not stabilized and you can expect that to be kind of a problem on the MX30 bit. No, that's solved on the MX32105 that MX has a stabilized gun. But the main drawback, and uh, uh, what I would say would be the the most like discouraging thing uh, from buying this vehicle is the lack of a stabilizer. Now I would say, give the tank a try. I mean, look how it performs in this battle, and uh, based on the performance, you can choose if you want this to be your first rank 15 or or not, of course. But 
the main problem is the lack of a stabilizer. Yeah, this thing is a sniper, uh, and since you don't have a stabilized gun, sniping would be your, one of your options. It has a very good coaxial gun, though, of, of one of the best coaxial machine guns in the tier, both this vehicle and the and the MF-32-105. They have very, very, very scary machine guns, autocannons in this case, I mean, their autocannons are on the level of the SPA level of autocannon, they're very good, and it does penetrate a lot, so they do have a lot of good form, in this case this vehicle uh, has very good guns, but unfortunately it's not stabilized, and that's the, the single most like the, the highest thing that would probably discourage players from buying the vehicle as their first as the as their first bank 15. Again, uh, I would definitely encourage to give this tanker to give the tank a try. It's an awesome vehicle. Even though it might not have a stabilizer, it's fast, it's a very agile, very mobile, and has fantastic fantastic main gun performance. So let's probably... I mean, this is still one of my favorite vehicles in the rank. I, I know that it might not be the most effective because it doesn't have a stabilizer, but, you know, I don't really need a stabilizer. If you know where to position the vehicle, honestly, it's very easy to get used to it. Uh, and in the end, it's not a very big issue. But as you can see, that APFSDS shell is terrifying. If I definitely don't want to be on the receiving end on this of this shell. Uh, probably the, the best gun in the tier for sure. Uh, best gun and best ammo in the tier, hand down. And that's why this thing is my favorite vehicle. Might not be perfect, but I just love it. And this this thing just gets the job done. Well, I have like six kills with it in this match. That's good. Not my best match, obviously, but you know, this is about the the most average performance that you should expect from the AMX 30B2. And it's pretty decent. It's honestly pretty decent. Should technically have upgrade kinetic protection, but honestly, uh, the like, explosive armor on this thing does get the job done really well. You can still get destroyed in one hit by the missile, but the chance of that happening is much smaller compared to some of the other vehicles. Now let's take uh, let's take the 32105 for a ride. Now when I did play this thing for the very first time, I actually played much better with the 30B2 than I played with the 32105. I don't know why. This tank never really liked me for in the first place. And when you look at the hull, uh, this tank does very does look very similar to the OF. It has the same like boxy design. Most of the vehicles of this period uh, have about like um, about the same design. Now the upgrade from from the 30B2 is that in this in this vehicle you do have a stabilized gun. You can uh, basically play the vehicle as the leopard and other, and other vehicles that have a stabilized gun. The stabilizer works really well on this thing. It does have slightly better armor, but it doesn't have the same. It doesn't have the same explosive reactive armor protection. It doesn't have any explosive reactive armor. It does mean that the uh, 30B2 should be much better at taking heat shells, ATGMs and HATFS shells. Mostly because the explosive armor on these vehicles on, on the 30B2 is actually, as I mentioned before, really good. And it really does save you from ATGMs and stuff like that. Also, worth noting, this vehicle is a little bit heavier and this vehicle is a little bit slower than the 30B2, but honestly, that's not a bad trade uh, if we consider the fact that the gun is stabilized and you still do get a very good gun, uh, you still get very good ammo. 
uh, the again the APFSDS shelves of this platoon are terrifying. They really do damage really bad. You also do have uh, heat and uh, HE ATFS, but you probably will not be using HE ATFS if you are driving this vehicle. Uh, APFSDS is just much better. And I mean, let's be real here. Uh, APFSDS is probably the number one shell type that most players will take. Of course, doesn't mean that the uh, heat shells are bad. They do have their use, but in the, in, in this uh, tier where you have explosive reactive armor, you want something that can punch through it. And explosive reactive armor can stop heat shells in ATGS, but it might not be that lucky against APFSDS. That goes through most of the armors within the tier. Honestly, I personally prefer the 30B2 over the 30 over the 32105. That was a that was a good triple strike there. Okay, <laughs> very good triple strike. I actually prefer the B2 over the 32105, mostly because I prefer the faster turret. I mean, the, the turret on the on the 30B2 just turns very quickly. 40 degree per second versus 30 degree per second. It is a significant difference. And uh, I, I just got very used to having no stable letter on, on that vehicle. Now, uh, one thing that I forgot to mention, uh, their ammo. Both tanks have some of the ammo stored in the back of the turret. So if you do get hit in the turret, the shell can technically go all the way to the back of the turret and detonate your ammo. So if you do get hit by a ATGM, the ATGM has a higher chance to detonate the tank of the 32105 than to detonate the ammo of the 30B2 because of the added protection. But overall, uh, I, I would say if you have the 32105 if you can't get used to the 30 B2, if you prefer a tank with a stabilizer, then I guess this vehicle would be for you. And leveling up, well, it's 150 gold, I believe, to level 5 levels up, which is not that much, really. Uh, if you do get this platoon, you can immediately spend 150 gold and just get this vehicle and play this vehicle if you can get used to the, to the first one. But I, I would say definitely give the give a chance to the to the first vehicle because it is a I mean I, I don't know this vehicle does go 65 km per hour but getting to that speed is not, doesn't happen that often uh, the, the speed this this vehicle is definitely much slower even though they are about they are rated to go the same speed the, this vehicle is definitely slower uh, so that's also one big difference to note. So, uh, that was, those were the two main battle banks of the AMX platoon. Let's go and let's take the OF platoon for a ride. Now, the difference between the AMX 30B2 and the OF 14 is in the, well, in the, in the main gun, firstly. Uh, they are both the same caliber, but the AMX has a better gun and overall does have better APFSDS shells. At least that's what it feels like when used in combat, but the OF is a smaller vehicle, when I say smaller vehicle, definitely a, a low profile vehicle, has quite a flat turret, is stabilized, the turret rotation speed of this vehicle is very good. Uh, of course, the speed is a bit different. The 30B2 is slightly faster, slightly more agile, but the turret rotation speed on both uh, is very similar. And this this vehicle does have a very a very interesting gun method. The gun method can actually absorb shells, but uh, the ammo placement and ammo storage is about the same in the back of the turret. So if you do get hit in the turret, your tank can explode. Honestly, when I played this tank, it did feel like a Leopard. I mean, technically this is a Leopard. A upgrade Leopard, to be more accurate. And 
and when it comes to which one of these vehicles plays better or should I say uh, which one of the starting vehicles is technically better well it really depends I mean if you like a stabilized gun and I guess this is probably the platoon for you because this gun is stabilized you do get APFSDS, HEATFS and high explosive the HEATFS I mean it's okay I guess not my favorite ammo type obviously but it does get the job done so not not going to complain too much about the, the shell type if you can't get used to the HEDFS, then you can easily just, you know, I guess use gold again and skip levels to unlock better ammo. It would make the grind much easier, but you know, HEADFS is still going to get the job done, so not necessarily like required it, that you have uh, to spend to spend gold to level it up. And uh, one of the key differences uh, between the vehicles in use is the speed at which you can engage the enemy. Obviously, if you don't have a stabilizer, you have to basically already be sitting still and you have to wait for the tank to come in your line of sight. With this vehicle, you don't have to do that. You can go back, shoot, and it doesn't really, you know, it's basically point and click. Uh, and this is where most of the main battle tanks will have a big advantage over the AMX because having a stabilized gun is definitely much better than having no stabilized gun. So most of the main battle tanks in a duel will have the advantage over the AMX. And if that's a turn off, I guess, then this tank is probably the better choice between the AMX and uh, and the OF platoon. Of course, uh, having a stabilized gun does come at a cost of having slightly worse APFSDS and slightly worse penetration, but but it's still APFSDS and it's still going to get the work done. Also, does have this thing also has some good machine guns, but the machine guns, the well, the auto cannons on the AMX platoon is just, they're just much better. They're just much better. And on, on this vehicle I actually use HEATFS and APFSDS shells at the same time. It just gets the job done. I use the HEATFS against more lightly armored vehicles since they ca it, it can still serve as high explosive. It can still overpressure some vehicles. And lightly, lightly armored vehicles when they are hit by the HATF, they, they just explode, so uh, that's why I use the, that shell as well. And of course, if I ever run out of APFSDS shells, I can just use HATFS and basically, you know, have both high explosive ends, have penetrating power to defeat enemy armor. Now, when it comes to armor, uh, all of the vehicles uh, have no armor. This, this thing, for example, uh, this thing, for example, doesn't have any explosive reactive armor. And this is where I wish I had more heat shells. But APFSDS will get the job done. They take a bit longer, but eventually it, it did destroy the vehicle. You can technically bounce shells with the OF, with the OF quite easily. It has a very interesting frontal plate. It's angled, and if you angle the frontal plate, you can bounce shells with it. Not in the, in the same way as you can bounce shells with the ZTZ, which has composite armor. The ZTZ, I think the ZTZ still has like the best uh, armor of any heighter vehicle, since it is uh, composite, and that's slightly different from the armor that we have on, on these vehicles. It's very tough. Uh, so that's one interesting little fact about the ZTZ 88A and I think the ZTZ 591 also has composite armor and explosive armor as well. But this vehicle, for example, doesn't have any explosive armor so you will be vulnerable to ATGMs. ATGMs are basically the 
single most the highest threat I would say uh, we will see what the next rank platoon will be I really hope for a very interesting ATGM box I mean I love my ATGM death boxes okay I love to play ATGM vehicles they're so fun uh, and in a lot of ways in a lot of ways ATGM carriers are kind of the the best vehicles I mean obviously a missile will simply do a lot more damage than a shell when it impacts might not be as fast but the fitting armor is definitely much easier and the missiles do a lot of damage when they hit not only they have penetration but they also have like explosives and that does a lot of damage when it goes inside well i made seven kills with the of which is actually not bad about what you can expect from this vehicle positioning is everything and of course you have to make sure that you do hit the enemy before they hit you that's basically how you play high tier and this will be very fun to see when they merge rank 15 and they will do that by the way uh, they will merge rank 15 i'm very excited to see how that will go but the OF-40 is definitely a very fun to drive vehicle, gets the job done and it is a very good main battle tank. Might not be the fastest, uh, but it is decent. Uh, the low profile does help a lot. And it does have a very good uh, gun depression, so you can take advantage of the small turret. And that's also a valid tank. Now let's take the Leopard 1A5 for a little spin. Now the 1A5 is basically the upgrade Leopard A1A1 uh, with the difference that this thing should have had a... It, it should have had the DM33 APFSDS which would be one of the best APFSDS shells in high tier but unfortunately this tank did not get that shell but nonetheless, it didn't really impact the tank's performance. It still has good APFS DS shells, has a good gun. Slightly upgraded over the A1A1, but it's practically about the same vehicle. So you can expect uh, very good performance out of it. Would I use this vehicle as a rank 15? Well, I mean, I think they will buff the vehicle, they will give it the TM33 APFS DS and when that happens, the Leopard 1A5 would definitely be a better, a better vehicle. Uh, but it's still a decent vehicle, it still gets the job done, so I'm not really going to complain much about the lack of the uh, DM33. When it comes to the OF and when you compare this vehicle to the 32105 and to the OF, it is stabilized, it is uh, slightly larger and taller than the OF uh, and also does seem uh, like it's slightly larger and taller than the 32105 the ammo is good, the APFSDS shell is good so on both of the vehicles I guess the shell type is decent Serverability, well it's a leopard Leopards have no armor, so it has the same suitability as the A1A1, which is obviously not that good. No explosive reactive armor protection. It's, well... I think when we compare this vehicle to the 32105, I guess the 32105 might have the better gun and overall uh, does seem that it has a better protection, but this thing has the better mobility. After all, it is a leopard, they're very fast. This thing can get over 80 km per hour. So, when it comes to maneuverability, the leopard is definitely um, much better than the 32105 and definitely better than the OF. The OF compared to this thing is definitely not as fast. But of course, both vehicles, all three vehicles, are actually very similar. Their, their playstyle is also very similar. The, the main gun on the Leopard is also stabilized. 
And from now on, from on this platoon and on the next platoon that I'll take a look at, all of the main guns are stabilized. So shooting while on, on the move is not going to be a problem. Although I usually don't really shoot while on the move. Uh, it's very good when you want to take snapshots. You aim, you pre-aim, you peek out, shoot and go back to cover. That's basically why stabilized guns are important. You can't really do that with the AMX because it doesn't really have a stabilized gun, which in this case is a significant drawback. When it comes to gameplay style and how these vehicles can be used, well, you can use you can use this vehicle as a sniper. All of the vehicles, obviously, can be good snipers. The accuracy on all of the guns is very good, so sniping is not going to be a problem on all of the platoons. If you like sniping, then absolutely no problem. Flanking is definitely better to do with a faster vehicle, so the more agile vehicles of the of the platoon are definitely more suitable for for flanking maneuvers and for overall fast and rapid action but in the end I, I think all of them can pull the same trick off after all uh, they're obviously not slow all of the main battle tanks are fast so you don't have to worry about speed being a problem maybe speed can be a problem if you are used to fast vehicles like the leopard so if that's the case then the fast vehicles are definitely the the better choice, I guess. Well, not exactly the better choice, but it will be, I guess, more familiar to you. In my case, I played all the vehicles multiple times, so I mean, I say multiple times, I played all, all of the vehicles a lot of times, so not really a big problem in my case. And this is Kinda funny, but the APFSDS failed to penetrate that tank. So, yeah, it was kind of bad luck. Leopard's mobility is always quite welcomed to have. And this seems like it's going to be a fail, but not much I can do about that. I mean, you can't, you can't really win every single match that there is. So, th this is why I'm not moving to the base, I just want to destroy as many tanks as possible. Since I know there's like 3 or 4 enemy tanks camp in the base, I have high chance to do more if I just wait for them to, to come towards me. But yeah, the Leopard A1A1 in general does feel like the classic Leopard A1A1. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. It just sometimes I really don't feel like this tank does belong in in this uh, in this rank. Uh, maybe could have been a decent rank 14 vehicle. I don't know, but it really doesn't feel like a rank 15 vehicle since there's very very little difference between the A1 A1 and the 1 A5. And of course, my shell doesn't do anything. Oh well, uh, was nonetheless a, a very good match there, a very good battle. I did everything I could, but yeah, that match wasn't... I wasn't able to carry the match. And let's go to the last three vehicles of of the video, the Magach Platoon. Now, as I mentioned, the Magach Platoon is definitely on the slower side when we compare when you compare the speed, uh, they are definitely the slowest uh, rank 15 vehicle. 48, 45 km per hour is the average top speed. 8 km per hour is the reverse, which honestly, compare, comparing it to the other main battle tanks, is not that good. Uh, it's, yeah, that's, I think the, the worst aspect of these vehicles is the speed. They are very slow. They are indeed very, very slow. The armor is not that bad. Uh, it's... Well, it does 
sometimes work, I guess. Uh, the main gun and the APFSDS is... I, I was trying to figure out where to place this APFSDS shell since... It doesn't feel as good as the AMX APFSDS. I, I still would say the AMX has like the, the best best performing shell out of any rank 15 vehicle but on paper they do have the same amount of penetration so I would say it's probably the second best APFSDS that we have in in rank 15 and the third and last place would be for the OF platoon since the OF has the lowest average penetration while these but well, this platoon has the same average as the AMX but the AMX seems to perform a little bit better when it comes to the shell performance. Now the turret rotation speed on this vehicle is not that good. I mean I don't really I'm trying to put these vehicles in a comparable way but now when I actually look at things I mean they ha I guess they have the best armor they definitely have like the best armor on paper which isn't really that important in high tier armor isn't really important in high tier as much as gun performances for example but they do have the best armor well technically they do after all, their upgrades M60 and M60A2 main battle tanks. In, in most cases, one player say that the Magach platoon is just about average. I would actually agree. Because I've had a lot more success with the previous platoons than I have with the, with the, with the Magach platoon. And that kind of I mean, that's just my opinion, I guess, in the end. If you like the vehicle, then go buy it. It's, no, it's that simple. I I'm just here to share my opinion and how I look at these vehicles. I played, I think I have over 100 hours on all of these vehicles combined, or even more than that. So I played them a lot. Uh, and I found myself to struggle the most with the Magach platoon. I don't know why. Uh, you did have like good games on, on the start. Uh, the m I did really have some good games on the start. The vehicles, these vehicles are more, I guess, more passive. But they're not really designed to run around and shoot stuff. Mostly because they're quite slow, very, slow, very much, much slower than compared to their other main battle tank counterparts. Not necessarily, you know, a bad thing. Uh, it, it's just that you will have to play the vehicles in a little bit different way. The survivability comparing this vehicle to the OF and to the 30B2, it, it is difficult to to say. The 30B2 still has like the best gun and it's still the fastest. This vehicle has like the best armor. And overall, the OF has a stabilized gun. This also has a stabilized gun. So, very close to the OF when it comes to performance. And it does have an advantage over the 30B2 by having a stabilizer, which means that you can shoot much earlier than the AMX. But in the end, which one of these three vehicles would I personally take? The 30B2, the OF, or the Magach? I'm taking the AMX 30B2 when we compare the starter main battle tanks. Mostly because I, uh, my experience with the 30B2 it was much better than my experience with this thing for some reason. I think it's the speed, really. Uh, with a faster tank you can get to positions much faster and you can shoot much much earlier, which means that you still have a good chance to destroy the enemy vehicle before the enemy vehicle destroys you. 
So that's, I guess, a that's a, a very good advantage. The disadvantage, already mentioned, uh, doesn't have a stabilized gun. In, in, I mean, in, in the end, it really depends what vehicle uh, you prefer to drive. If you like slower vehicles, this is the vehicle for you. If you prefer fast vehicles, the AMX is the vehicle for you. If you prefer a bit of both, then the OF is the good starting vehicle. And, and honestly, this button is kind of, I guess, the weirdest because when, when, when we look at the tanks in the platoon, right, they are very similar when we look at the stats. I was very kind of confused at first when I looked at the stats between the vehicle because honestly, to me it looked it's the same thing. To me it looked like three different vehicles, two of them, two of the vehicles are very very similar and, and a third vehicle which is based on a different hull but it has about the same stats. So some would say that this platoon might be boring because all of the vehicles are about the same and, and I would actually agree to some extent the Manak Proton might be the most boring one because all the vehicles are about the same, the performance is also about the same, but at the same time I would like to say that that could also be a very good advantage since you have three very capable vehicles to play. If one of the vehicles gets destroyed you can go to the next one which is about the same as the previous one, if, that, if the second one gets destroyed you have a third one that you can also use if your second one gets destroyed, so you do get tanks that are very similar in performance and you don't really have to worry about being destroyed in the match since you can just go and hop onto the next tank basically which is almost the same as the first tank so consistent performance is what this platoon is very good at and I like that so in, the, in that aspect it is a very unique platoon since it's consistent of course uh, I'm a player who likes different vehicles in the platoon and I would love to have a variety of different tanks and stuff like that, so yeah. Now let's take a little spin with the Magach 6B, which is very similar to the Magach 6R, but you know, it's about the same tank, with just a little difference in, in the stats. Now they do have good gun depression, obviously, since I'm able to take advantage of this position. The turrets, the gun mantlets. Uh, isn't really the thickest. Your turret can be painted, so I wouldn't be relying on the turret armor much. Uh, you can rely on the explosive armor a little bit, but I wouldn't be relying too much on it since I did destroy a lot of these vehicles by the A direct hit in the explosive armor, which was kind of funny since you know it wasn't able to stop the missile from wrecking the tank. So you can play the tank in this uh, in this scenario that they have here. It does work really well for the for the position, and honestly, I, I like it. And not not as good as the T29 or the the, the, the Chonk M6A2 E1, but they can get the job really well. And the APFS DS shell on this platoon, as mentioned before, is decent. I would say it's second best. So you don't really have to worry about penetrating the enemy tanks. It it gets the job done quite easily. And so far, I mean, this is probably one of the, one of the better rounds I had with this vehicle. You would not believe me how many fails I've had before I could actually record this. I don't know why, I used to play. When I got the tank for the first time, I played really well. Now, I play other main ball tanks much better than I play these tanks. I think I'm just a player who just prefers more speed over, over tank, I guess. And of course, I get bombed. It can save you from bombs, from close proximity explosions, thus stop the shrapnel with the explosive reactive armor, which is a very interesting thing. That I noticed.
Of course, as I mentioned before, the turret is... Is this? But the turret is not going to stop all of the shells. Your turret can get padded, so that's one thing that you have to be careful around. For some reason my tank does not want to repair, that's kind of funny. Oh well. No. Hold down positions are very good. Uh, and the OF I guess would be much better in this position. Or the AMX 3205 because they're just much more low profile than this thing. And of course having a, having a low profile is very helpful when it comes to stealth. But this vehicle, how does it compare to the 3205 and how does it compare to the Leopard? Well, I mean, it is the same case as with the previous tanks. Uh, it is not the fastest. And if you don't mind the speed, if you want a vehicle that's that's fast, I guess, and then go for the faster vehicles if you prefer something with a more of a sniping supportive role then and this thing is definitely the the tank for you. Well this platoon is definitely for you. But that was a decent that was a decent match. Six kills with the Magach and that did that was fun. Now and let's go to the last tank for today, the, well, I, I kind of forgot the name, <laughs> the, the short called Gimel, yeah, that's, that's the name of this thing. So, uh, this is technically a Centurion, I upgraded a heavily modified Centurion, and I, as I mentioned before, this thing is, for some reason, the most playable tank, at least for, for me, in this platoon. Uh, it does have APFSDS, has hash as well, so that's undecent shell type that you have has very good gun depression and this thing can actually bounce shells has a very good thick frontal plate well I say thick frontal plate uh, I bounced a lot more shells with this tank with this vehicle than I bounced with the previous tanks and of course you do also have some a very good explosive armor protection on the vehicle. As you can see, I bounced a bunch of shells there. So... Now this this, this thing this thing is also a, a bit tall, also need to mention that. This, this is a bit tall. It is... Definitely not a low profile vehicle. And the turret kind of sticking out, but it's not a big issue. The reverse speed is not as good as you can see. Definitely the, the, the weirdest main battle tanks, mostly because of the reverse. All of the main battle tanks have very good reverse. Well, decent reverse in some cases, but the reverse on this platoon is probably the worst. But it's not a big deal, as I mentioned before. These vehicles are meant to be played in a more sniping way, a more, you know, supportive, supportive role. And I can't repair my tank again, which is kind of funny. Oh well, I just have to finish the game without any repair kits then. Well, let's see, where should I drop these bombs at? I think I'll just go and try to... Yeah, let me drop bombs on... Oh, my, my artillery did finish that thing off. Well, let's drop bombs on that vehicle. I definitely had a lot more fun with the shot Kalgimel than I've had with the with the Magach main battle tanks. I don't know why this tank just likes me, I guess. It's a modified Centurion. Very similar to the Centurion 104 or the STRV 104. After all, it is still a Centurion, so both names are correct. And as you can see, the APFSDS. One hit usually does finish the tank. 
That's why I'm saying that this is the second best AP FSD assets we have in the tier. And it's definitely leading up to the to the name. You can also pick H E A T F S shells if you like. I mean both are going to get the job. I actually used H E A T F S on this vehicle when I got it and honestly it did a very good job. It's very accurate as well, as you can see it was a direct hit in the ammo. And that tank blew up immediately after being hit. That's basically what should happen every time you hit the ammo for the vehicle. Didn't have as many kills as with the previous two tanks, but honestly, it doesn't matter. It's still a, a very chill match so far, a very easy victory. So, uh, my final conclusion on these vehicles, well, if you prefer a good gun, if you like a good gun, if you prefer fast tanks, then the AMX platoon is definitely the, the way to go. If you prefer something more balanced, then the OF platoon is definitely the right choice for you. If you prefer slower vehicles with better armor and vehicles that are more suitable for sniping, then the Magach platoon is definitely the platoon that I would go for if, if you prefer that type of game. But in the end, I would say give a chance to all of the vehicles when you have enough I guess silver since all the vehicles are very good and they're all very unique in their own respective way and in the end I've had a blast with every single one of these tanks they're very good vehicles very good tanks and they all deserve to to be used in in the game but with that being said hope you guys enjoyed hope I could help you to decide which main battle tank button to get and well with that being said if you would like to support me Feel free to like and subscribe, and with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.